What is going on, Adventure Nation? In this episode, we do a little boondocking outside of Tucson, do a little county park outside of Tucson, and then we head on over into Yuma. This is Life with Paul and Lorena. Good morning, Adventure Nation. We are rolling out of Lake Medina Thousand Trails, continuing, continuing our trek west. We're not gonna make El Paso today, but that's our destination where we're gonna hang out there for a week or so, get a few things done that we need to get done there before continuing on. Hopefully the one thing will be our windshield, which was supposed to happen in Orlando, but couldn't because they thought we were an F1, F550 for some reason. And uh, yeah, so that's all we got. Oh my God, many things I need to get done before Baja. How we say we have done going to Baja? No, we can, <laughs> we can talk about that right now. We've said <laughs> we're gonna talk about it in a future video, so we might as well talk about it right now. So many things to accomplish before like heading that way and windshield, tires, rotors. Oh my God, so much maintenance. Paul has already fixed the vents. Both Max fans went out on us, so Paul already fixed them. The steps too, the steps of the RV. Seems to be like many little things at the same time. Yeah, old, old Freya <laughs> has forgotten how reliable she's been. So uh, oh, no, she's starting to... Weather maintenance, years maintenance. Uh oh, that was your water bowl. Yeah. It's gonna be just real account. If you had a house, you will have to do maintenance in your house. This is our little house for now, so this is the maintenance in our house. Yes. And we are heading to Baja. We are going to be heading over to Yuma. We're meeting a few friends that we were going to go on our original uh, caravan with, and we're gonna go down to Baja with them. Now we don't know yet what we're doing as far as how long we're staying in Baja, whether we're just doing the winter there, whether we're gonna stay more permanently and start working on the property. We don't know yet. Uh, we wanna work on the property, but we might just do, still do winters there and summer out. We, I guess we really still haven't discussed that, right? Or haven't, we I discussed it, but we haven't figured I, I was, it out. I thought we had, and I'm, I have a clear idea what I want, or what is that you don't. What's your clear idea? Eventually, winter's on there, summer's north, traveling or something. Right. But for now, for the next little future, we need to develop the property. So we're going to be down there and doing that. So we are going to do winter and then try a summer down there. As Ooh. long as it takes us to develop a little bit of property. Well, there's not going to be any wind down there during the summer, so I'm going to have to become a fisherman. I want to see that. Yeah, you want to see that? It'll be like, oh, I caught a fish. Ew, I got to fillet it. He's very squeamish. I, got, <laughs> I was such a good fisherman when I was a kid, and now I'm so squeamish with everything. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, we'll bring it home. Lori can fillet it. Sure. But, uh, yeah, fishing is good down there. But Baja, here we come, uh, and we'll have some video from the road with the, the folks that were taken down there. Uh, some of the familiar faces that you guys know are coming along with us. Tom and Faye, you guys have met before. And then there's some going to be some newbies. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be a lot also of fun. people that we know too just have not been a video, but right. we'll get to know everybody. We will get to know everybody. But uh, that's it for now. Lake Medina was a bust. Lori waited until she got here to get her paddleboard out. Waited all along the coast to get the paddleboard. She's like, I'm gonna get my paddleboard out when I get to Lake Medina. And Lake Medina left. Well, I was gonna do it in Magnolia Beach, but it got windy, so I didn't do it. So this was my next spot, and there's no water. Yeah. So, so what are you gonna do, right? So let's hit the road, Lori, and get on up to El Paso, and then we'll figure out a little mo bit more. Yes.
Good morning, everybody. We are still not off I-10 yet. We're still not to El Paso yet, even though we've been driving for hours and hours and hours uh, from San Antonio. We're, all, We're still in Texas. Still in Texas, yeah. <laughs> We're about uh, almost 400 miles from San Antonio. So that means we're really closing in on uh, El Paso, but not quite there yet. Yeah, we've got a few hours to go. But uh, short drive today and all freeway, so we will get there fairly quickly. It's a Tech. rest stop. We spent a night in a rest stop, and it takes me back to, I think, year one. Yeah. Where we used to do a lot of this. Where it's super noisy and... Yeah. And you just feel like at some point it becomes more noisy. I didn't think I would be able to sleep last night, but I actually slept like a baby. Me so too. we were tired. Yeah. It was a long day. <laughs> it was a long day. Texas is a big state, but just to keep you Texans in line, you can still fit into Alaska by two or three times. Just want to just want to mention that. Just want to mention that. Why do you have to go there? Yeah, I don't want them to get big heads. Oh, this is not good. Come out, and we immediately have to go to a single lane. Not good at all. more people here than we're used to seeing. As you guys know, we're here in El Paso. We've got Dylan and Val working on the front windshield. We're replacing the windows. It's about to come out right now. Check that out. How cool is that? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, there you go. There ain't a lot of people like this. How y'all doing out got there? It. I got it. And there you go, so both sides are out. It looks actually much better. I could film much better out the front window if it looked like that. <laughs> Might be a little windy in here though. Lori wouldn't like it that much. Val's taking a little rust off the old gal there to get her sealed up. Dylan's been working diligently on that as well. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I have a windshield I can see out of. It's gonna be amazing. If you guys are in Las Cruces or in El Paso area, ASAP Glass, right there on the back of his truck. You can see that, ASAP Glass. And I'll put his number on the video as well. So if you guys need a glass repair, Val can take care of you guys in this area. That feels good now. Ooh, and Val's just finishing up, man. We're almost there. He's putting in the goo. The last window goes in and we'll be good to go. Look at that, Dylan's got the glass all perfectly clean. It's nice. Don't expect it to stay that way. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Don't get the don't hope for that. Don't go on back. Woo! Brand spank a new windshield in there. How cool is that? I like it. Can't wait to hit the road with that one. Good morning, Adventure Nation. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. We're, depending on where you are in the world. We are rolling out of El Paso. We have been in El Paso now for a few days, getting some just, stuff. Just a week, we thought we had time to do everything, and yeah. it's like we have time to do nothing. <laughs> yeah, we thought, oh yeah, a week will give us time to fix everything that needs to be. But no, just half of our list of things to do. But the one thing you can notice is the windshield. Oh yeah, look it out that front, how no nice cracks, and- No no chips. Yeah, no, no bugs, bugs yet. yet. <laughs> they will come and they will say. But uh, yeah, it, it looks amazing. It feels like a completely different coach being able to look out there without any of the stone chips or any of that kind of stuff. So pretty amazing. We did get to spend some time with my daughter and grandkids and son-in-law. Yeah. So, hey guys. I love thanks for, kids. Thanks for hanging out with us while we were here. Uh, my daughter, Allie, son-in-law, John, and Amory and Ryan. So we got to hang out with all those guys. That was good. We did get to hang out with Lorena's mom and sister as well. Yes. So, hey, Vero. Hey, Nina. <laughs> and now it's time to head on down the road. We are continuing our trek west. Today, our goal is Tucson. I don't know if we're going to make that. We're having a late start. <laughs> no, you're kidding me. 
lately we've been good actually. We've been leaving early places, but today it was just so much little stuff to put away and things like that. Yeah, there's been days we've hit the road at nine or ten o'clock, which is yeah. which is pretty amazing for us. But yeah, we were still preparing some things today, so don't know how far we're gonna get. We'll probably get pretty close to Tucson. We don't usually drive at night. We have driven at night uh, a couple of times in this last trip, and uh, so we'll see what happens, but we'll get as close as we possibly can. destination for this evening BLM BLM land let's see well right here good morning everybody we are here at this BLM camp just outside of Tucson Arizona and it's been a pretty good stay. We've stayed a couple of nights now. We were going to stay one night and then transfer over to Gilbert Ray Campground, which is up by Old Tucson, but instead we've stayed a couple of nights. You can see there's a bunch of other RVers here. This is your typical uh, BLM spot that gives you 14 days to uh, hang out. It's all dry camping. The only problem is there's a stoplight here on the main highway and at night it is a drag strip. So just hearing people accelerating away from that stoplight on motorcycles and things like that. And then last night was what, Saturday night, today, Sunday, uh, somebody in a UTV decided to come in here and tear around on their UTV at 11 o'clock at night in between all the RVs, which kind of sucked, but it's gonna happen sometimes when you're in places like this. So overall, not bad. Now we're gonna head up towards the, the mountain up there uh, is Old Tucson and a beautiful state park campground. I actually think it might be a county park campground called Gilbert Ray. We're going to go stay up there for a couple of days. We're meeting a friend here in Tucson and going to go have dinner with them later on today. That's why I'm wearing my nice shirt and stuff instead of just my normal t-shirt. So I'm going to go have dinner. So right now we're going to go and head up to the campground and then uh, jump in the car and head on over into Tucson. So let's get her done. See if Lori's ready, I believe she is. She's probably waiting on me. All right, we've uh, arrived at Gilbert Ray Campground here just outside of Tucson. Which it's just yes. up the road from old uh, old Tucson, the the studio, the old West studio, which is closed right now. I don't know what they're doing with that. We have but, been in this campground once before. Yeah, it was super cool. Four or five years ago. <laughs> super cool. But this year, we didn't get a reservation. We're going to go into the H loop, which which is the stairs. The stairs didn't come in. Didn't come in. Oh, that's great. So we I just rubbed the stairs along the curb, yes. probably destroyed them. Uh, we'll have to check that right now. Go ahead and um, can you um, open the door and then close the door again and see if it'll come back in? We had we had a problem earlier and then all of a sudden they started working. So maybe they just stopped working again. Great. So we are going to be coming into the H loop here, which is first come first you serve. Want, I went on. And no, I never turned it up. Yeah, we never turned it off. So we're gonna find a spot here and uh, see what happens. I love big rigs, so maybe a lot of the long ones are taken. Yeah. Fit potentially in that but order. they have papers on them already. So this is uh, H4 right here. That you can one, do that one. The same with this one here. I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot. Yeah. So yeah, let's go around and we'll uh, pop up here. We'll and, find something. and here's another one right here. So I think that'll work. Right there. Nope, that's a little short, that one. Let's just keep going around and see what happens. 
That one has a cone. That one has things. Things. Yeah, there's no vehicle, but <laughs> things in the vehicle. That one has blocks. But anyways, we'll uh, we'll find one and then oh, we'll let you guys. H thirteen. Yeah. It's a little bit of a weird angle, but you can angle it. Yeah, that I can get in there. Fine. And there is that one there too. Well, let's let's just and see, but let's yeah, get, uh, let's get out and see the sights. Let's get out and see. Good morning from Gilbert Ray Campground, just outside of Tucson. We didn't talk about the site really when we arrived, so just a quick going through of the site. Pretty decent size. They're all different sizes, so as you drive through this particular area, which is uh, a, uh, what do you call it, first come, first serve. So when you drive through this area, you just pick a site. So you find one that's going to fit your rig. There were some fairly large Class A's in here, so if you have something large, you'll be fine. As you can see, there's a bus across the way there, and it's a 42-footer or so. So the sites themselves are fairly decent. We were able to fit 34 plus the trailer, so we're around 45 feet almost 50 feet with the trailer and able to fit well decent size to the sides and still room to park the the car in the front here so really nice sites very nice campground beautiful surroundings we're just up the road from old tucson and we're in the mountains just outside of tucson the city of tucson is on the other side of that mountain right there so just absolutely spectacular views in that direction. And at night, down in this direction, you can see some of the, the city lights from, or the outskirts of the city lights anyways, down in that area. So Gilbert Ray Campground, just outside of Tucson. Thumbs up, great campground. Now it's time to hit the road. We're gonna head on over to Yuma. Are you ready? Ready for what? To head out. Yeah, okay. To Yuma. All right, I'll meet you up at the, uh, garbage area and registration area and we'll hook up up there. Sounds good. Fantastic. The boondocking outside of Tucson is actually pretty decent, other than it was a little bit noisy. Remember, there were cars pulling away from the stoplight and yeah, stuff there? Yeah, I will always say boondocking just right outside bigger cities are never the best ones because you have a lot of people that I feel like they have been forced to be in that situation and right. necessarily they want to be there for leisure. And so right. you're always hesitant about that. Right, but Gilbert Ray Campground, I know that's one of your favorites. It's a county park and it's like one yes. of your favorites. In Arizona, yes. It's like, I, if you love a setting with all the saguaro, and just beautiful sunsets and trails to hike and everything, that's the place to go. Yep. And it's still so close to Tucson. You it can is. still go and do a bunch of stuff over there. It is pretty handy. A little bit of a windy road to get up to it, but it's actually quick out to the main road and then into Tucson in no, no time whatsoever. But this is where we're going to end this one. Uh, as you can see, it's really windy where we are. And of course, we're going to get into that in the future. Lots of kiting <laughs> going on behind us, but we're going to end it here. If you'd like to hang out with us a little bit, get to know us, they have to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. It'd be equally as cool if you like this video. And we'll see you again in the next episode. I have a feeling they know where we are. Yeah, I, yeah everybody, everybody kind of knows where we are. That. But uh, Duo Tone's <laughs> doing a little thing demo. out here today. They're doing a, a demo day. And uh, I don't know why I didn't come up here and demo a kite, Laurie. But because you didn't know, really. Yeah, I didn't know. So <laughs> see you guys.